This is the plaintiff, Yolanda Tisdale. She says the defendant is her ex-live-in lover, and he owes her for half the bills in the place they once shared. She couldn't mentally handle living with this guy, is relieved to be rid of him, and is suing for the $1,054.25 she says she's owed. This is the defendant, Alan Abney. He says he paid his half of the bills from the time they moved in together to the time they terminated their lease. The only reason the plaintiff is suing him is because he moved on to a younger woman who he had a baby with and she's jealous. He's accused of leaving an ex high and dry. All parties, please hit your right hand. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Milian is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn in, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay. Ms. Tisdale, you are suing Mr. Abney, your former boyfriend, for $1,054.24 that you say he owes you as the other half of the final bill from where you live together. Talk, talk to me and tell me what the arrangement was between you folks. You dated for how long? Uh, just over a year. And you ended up moving in together? So we met in January 2019. Uh, things moved rather quickly. He moved in to my apartment. Um, but he came with a puppy, so we needed a larger apartment for my son and him and a puppy. So we got a townhouse together. And how old was your April. son? Uh, 11. Okay. So you got a townhouse together in April. What does that phrase mean? that we went into it because it was higher than the current rent I was paying on my own. And we decided we would split the bills. I cannot afford that on my own. So that was talked about up front prior to even moving. All right, so were both of your names on the lease? My name was on the lease. Alan was on there as a occupant. Okay, and why is that? Um, during the online process, I didn't see where it said co-applicant. So after, it was a couple of weeks or so prior to moving in, um, I, he needed to be added for probation reasons. So he needed to have residency and show that he could live there. But, but back up. Okay. If the two of you are getting the place together, I'm just curious. Don't, don't worry about the legal effect it'll have because the legal effect it'll have is zero. I'm just trying okay. to understand why both of you didn't just sign the lease. Then both of you are on the hook to the landlord. So what thinking went right. into not having him on the lease? There was no spot online. I didn't see where I can add another applicant when I did the online application. All right, well, whatever. So then, but the deal between you two was what? That you would split it right in half? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So that would mean that each of you would pay how much per month? So it would have been six fifty. dollars mm -hmm. The rent was 1300 so uh -huh. six fifty. dollars mm -hmm. Then there's an additional uh, townhouse fee with uh, water, gas, and cable. Mm -hmm. That was around $54 a month. And then there was a separate entity of uh, our genie and Spectrum, which averaged a piece. It would have been a total like $50 a piece from both of us. OK, so, Mr. Abney, according to Yolanda, you're supposed to be paying half of the rent and half of the bills. When you guys break up, had you been paying half of the bills? Uh, yes, I always paid half the bills. I think uh, I, can I go back to the uh, yeah. what she said? Yeah. Okay, so uh, we met and we went out. I had my own home that I owned, I, I, that I own a deed to, the title to. And yes, I have a puppy. She had her own apartment. She would, had uh, an issue where she was going to be out of work for like 90 days because she was facing a surgery. I agreed to leave my house and move in with her to help her take care of and to help with that. And her, she was not going to receive her full paycheck. She was only going to receive like 50% of her pay for that period. And, and, and uh, I, I, I liked her. We had a great friendship. And this was my way of, of showing her that I was all in. Okay. And we moved in together. I, I had a house. And she had an apartment. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you don't have I to repeat that. I got that. So she has yeah. the surgery. You take care of her. And in your eyes, after that, she didn't need you anymore? Well... Well, I can't say that after that she changed. We filled out the application together. I have a copy of the application. And the lady at the rental office told me that she removed my name from the application and moved me to an occupant. 
I didn't need any residence for any probation reasons. I had my own home. You understand? I, I walked off three years probation and I got off of probation in December after doing 15 years okay. in a federal were prison. You, were you, oh, what'd you do 15 years in a federal prison for? For selling firearms. And I was fresh out of prison when I met her. Okay. Uh, I, I might have been a little naive. I admit 15 years, you are, you do want friendship. You do want the company of a woman. And uh, I'm not saying she took advantage of that or anything, but but I was there for her. Okay. And, Can I ask you something? Yeah. Because I'm not really a therapist. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out if you yeah. owe her money. She claims that you owe her money for the yeah. bills. Had you been paying the bills? I, I gave her, I think uh, our bills total came to like $1,800 a month. I know I was required to give her $900 a month. And I never paid the bills. She did. Okay. So, so she would be I, the one who would actually pay him, but... 650 represents your rent and then according to you you gave her $900 every month? Uh more than more yes, $900 every month. But okay. you gotta, you and that was to, supposed uh, to cover the bills. Yes. Now I'm a little nervous and I don't want to sound like I don't know what I'm talking about because never in my life did I expect or know that I owed her anything because I've talked to her and seen her since we moved out. She has she when I when she she left she abandoned the lease she left a month early, she told me she was three months behind on her car payment. I gave her the money. Two weeks later she was gone. I stayed in the house. I worked with the property management company. I still rent from them. I have a new apartment from them. She left a month early. But why did I thought you said you owned your own place and you didn't need it? I didn't. Oh well, in the process I sold that house. Okay. All you right, so Ms. Yeah. Tisdale, tell me, uh, when was the lease supposed to end? April 19th, 2020. Okay, and then oh. he says you abandoned the lease. When did that happen? I told him, as well as the complex, that I was moving out. On the 3rd, I told them I'm moving out. 3rd of what? 24th. The 3rd of April, I advised them I'll be moving out April 24th. And when did you That's move out, up. is my question. April 24th. All right, did you pay the month of April? I did not. I, did he did pay not. the month of April? He did not. All right. So then you end up getting a bill because you because you speak to the management company and you say we've got to settle this up. And then the bill the management company gives you has April rent and then it's cable and a fee for insurance non-compliant. So did they take any of the security deposit, Mr. Abney? Uh, well, when I went to talk to them. To, to, to try to uh, rectify the matter, they told me that I was not a leaseholder and they could not speak to me. Let me ask you this. How much of a security deposit did you put towards this apartment? I paid the first, I paid the first month rent in a security deposit. How much I of a security that. deposit did you put towards this apartment? I think, I, think it, I think it was like $800 or something. Did you put any of the security deposit up or did he put the whole thing? He did the full security deposit. Okay, I got it. The security deposit was three hundred. Oh uh, no, it was not. Wait, let's see. Show me the lease. Do you have the lease? Yes. Okay. Yes. Can you please hold it up to the screen? Okay. Can I grab it, please? Yeah, grab it and put it okay. up to the camera. Show me okay. the lease. And now, uh, what I want is to see the part that talks about the security deposit. All right, so I, I see that it says $300. What I'm not understanding okay. is if, in fact, the, the rent is $12.99 for April, why are they charging $440, Ms. Tisdale, on the move-out sheet? It looks to me like they took the other $800 from somewhere. Sir, do you have a receipt for the security deposit that you paid, no, Mr. Abney? No, but you're looking at you're Do look, you? You're yes or no? Do you have a receipt for the security deposit you paid? Uh, uh, no, ma'am. Okay. I didn't know I needed it. Do you have a receipt, Ms. This. Tisdale, for the security deposit that he paid? Yes. And it okay. says security Is this deposit. when you guys moved in, 4 19, 19? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Well, pro rate 527.60, 300 security deposit. Well, it looks like there was a 300 security deposit, but all that should be credited to him because he's the guy who paid it. You didn't pay any of the security deposits. So at a minimum, the 300 went to paying down rent but you're trying to split April rent, but he already put 300 towards it, didn't he? Yeah. He, he did not pay the 527 uh, prorated rent. I paid 527 and he paid the $300 security deposit. Okay, let me understand from you, Mr. Abney, why it is that you feel that you should not have to pay these charges, which is what the management company says you owed 
as a couple living there. 210849. She's trying to get from you half of that 210849. And what's your answer to that? Uh, well, my answer to that is I always gave her what I was supposed to give her. I have so here's what I want to understand. You're well, saying, well, I would give her money every month and it was more than 650. But I've looked at the cash apps and it's not more than 650 when I look at the cash apps. So uh, do you have other cash app evidence you want me to look at or any other proof of what you're saying? Because it looks like nobody was paying the cable or any of this stuff for since was. Je- well, but since January? He didn't pay. I had to t- absorb the cost myself. So you can see some months I never even got 650 from Allen. So some months I never got cable and our genie from Allen. So I had to pay it Man. myself. I am looking at the bill from the management company that says that cable wasn't paid in 2019 in December. And it charges you for the cable. So when you say you're paying stuff, apparently not because it's still on here. So, Mr. Abney, what I want to hear from you is proof that you paid bills and she just is pocketing your money and not paying the bills I mean, with it. I know she pocketed the money because the, this is the when I, this is the first time I ever seen the whole breakdown. It, that means she was giving them money and wasn't allocating the funds to where they were supposed to go. And now at the end of the lease, she's saying we owe on rent. No, you might owe for your cable. Or, or, you know what I mean? Or for something else that you was responsible for. You understand? Because you didn't allocate the funds and, and pinpoint where That's they were fine. supposed to be paid. I, I'm with you. If you can prove what you're saying, you're 100% right. Mm-hmm. If you're giving yeah. her 650 and then you're giving her more money for the other, for the half of the bills that the household has, then she yeah. should be using it to pay bills. I agree with you. you know, she- All I need you to do now, besides tell me how she broke your heart, is show me that you were paying my- the bills. <laughs> Yeah, I gave her the money. I know. But I gave her the money. How did you hey, give but it she to was, her? It, In cash? I, sometimes, she, sometimes she had my bank card. Sometimes uh, uh, I would give it to her in cash. Okay, can you it's just, just prove different that ways. for me? Uh, prove that. Ask her. Okay, watch this. Did, was he paying the bills? And are you double dipping now? No. He okay, paid what so I that didn't work very well. So when I've okay. looked at all of the cash apps, all I see is that you were paying rent. And when I look at the bill from December of 2019, October of 2019, there's a bunch of bills that nobody was paying because that's why they're on because, the final bill. You because see? because Miss Million, let me tell you it's what happened. It's Judge Million. What she did, Judge Judge Million, I'm yeah, very That's sorry. okay. That's all right. What she did was, I'm telling you what she did. In, in December, she went and took, she went and bought furniture, brand new furniture, and didn't pay any bills. This was the furniture she was planning on taking with her. She, she, and then when, uh, two weeks before she left, she got money. She told me she was three months behind on her car payment. And I couldn't believe it because I know that this is a person that always tried to pay her bills on time. When I gave her that money, she was gone. Okay. Now I'm not going to get into any personal details and, and reveal anything. I still have a family and things like that. And I want to, I don't want to embarrass them any more than I have already embarrassed. Them. Can I ask you something, Ms. Tisdale? At any point in time, I'm looking at some texts. Did he agree to pay this money? He agreed to pay April. I didn't have that final bill at that time. There was a text that I sent you that when I said, are you going to stay or pay? And he agreed to it. Are you still planning on leasing it in your name? Have you found another apartment? I'm going to re-sign the lease. If I am denied, I have another apartment June 1st. Are you going to pay the rent at 312 until then? Yes. Blah, 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 blah. All right. It looks to me like this is really something that you're supposed to share. And I am, in fact, going to order you to pay your half of it. Because I do not see a single bit of proof that you or she, frankly, paid bills Um, that's why they're on this bill with the management company. But I looked at every cash app that you sent her. You, you provided zero of them. She provided a lot of them. And I sat there and did the math and what they cover is the rent. So if you were paying other, other monies, I just need to see some proof of that because she says, no, you weren't. And I can tell that no, she wasn't either. Maybe because she bought new furniture. I don't know the reason why. I do know that here is a bill. I have two people who are equal partners in your own words at the beginning of the answer to your complaint. And equal partners have to pay the bill equally. So I am finding 
in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of $1,054.25. Good luck, folks. Well, the plaintiff was shaking her head after the judge announced the verdict. I don't know why, because she was awarded everything she was seeking, $1,054. The one who should have been shaking his head was Mr. Abney. What are, what are you thinking, Mr. Abney? Well, I'm thinking that uh, I don't think that the judge really took into consideration that this young lady abandoned a lease. And not only that, you're supposed to give a rental agency at least 60 days notice if you're going to resign or nothing. And, and I sent in all the evidence where the plaintiff actually told me she re renewed the lease, but then she abandoned the property and left me without a place to stay after she took me off the lease, making me an occupant, and then me having to scramble to find a place in two weeks. Well, the bottom line is the judge found for the def for the plaintiff, and, uh, you know, you're on the hook to pay her half of it, at least $1,054, well, and that's her decision. So uh, Ms. Tisdale, let me ask her what she's feeling right now. You were shaking your head after the decision. Why? I couldn't believe the uh, theatrics, that's all. But I'm happy, um, and thank God I the verdict came in on my favor. That's it. All right. Very good. It's all over between you two, obviously, right? Absolutely. For Absolutely. Sure. All right. Thank you very much. Congratulations. All right, Harvey. Doug, it seems uncomfortable to do this, but it is so necessary. If you are involved with someone and you move in with them, you got to set the financial ground rules of who is responsible for what. And you got to do it in writing. And if you think, oh, God, they're not going to like me if I do it. Guess what? They're going to like you less if you end up in court and the whole thing blows up. A neighbor has placed a rope swing on a branch from our tree, but the branch hangs over their property. We have no issue with the swing, but we worry that if the branch breaks and someone gets hurt, they're going to sue us. Can they do that? No, they can't do that because they're the ones who put the tree swing. There's nothing better than a tree swing, is there? No, they're wonderful. They're, they're <laughs> so much fun. We used to go to one all the time, and it actually wasn't on our property. No, we it, was were... a, it was on a, a, a field, and it was a really tall tree, and yeah. who, some it was clever like 30 person. 30 feet from 30 the ground. 30 feet in the It was a fun, the most around. fun tree swing ever. And when you, when you hang it that high, you get a really long throw. Long, long throw. throw. And so the, the, kids, kid the two older kids got to, the, the yeah. little one uh, doesn't remember it and no. gets very angry no, when we talk about so. it. But anyway, so no, that is a tree swing that your neighbor hung. Right. If there's any risk of Involved, that is a risk that they created, right. and uh, and if the branch is over their property, you can't even go over there and cut it down if no, you, you want can't. to, right? You can't. I You're going to have to work that out. It would be with trespassing, you. so you'd have trespassing. to have their permission to do it. Right. And I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, right. And and, and the the common law rule, we do see cases where trees are are either hanging out over a road from somebody's property or on someone else's lot from their property, and they fall, and people get seriously injured. I mean, you can ask the the governor of Texas about that because it happened to him. And the common law rule that's the same in every state is. A homeowner, a landowner, is not going to have liability for something like that unless they knew or should have known that, that this was, was a diseased, diseased damaged, yeah, dam dangerous right. tree somehow. I mean, what I might do, I might, you know, kind of type up a quick waiver that says I, I, hold, right. I will not hold you responsible for right. any, any damage should, you know. That, that wouldn't hurt. It's, would kind, it? it's kind of very lawyerly to do to your right. neighbor. but Right, because, I mean, the bottom line is anybody can sue anybody for anything right. in this country. And it's like, uh, in a case like that, are you going to get it knocked out right away on a motion to dismiss? Probably not, because um, you know, as a plaintiff, if I'm suing you for it, your first thing as a defendant is going to be to come in and say, oh, I, at your deposition, I looked at that tree every day. There was nothing wrong with it. I didn't see any evidence that it was ever rotted, damaged, hurt, hit by lightning, anything. And then it's going to be incumbent on a plaintiff to come in and say, uh, so it's oh, a good I idea. have an expert. My expert says that. that. Yeah. So, so it's better right. to just write something out that says, I, I, I will not hold you responsible for any accidents resulting from the tree swing. Have them sign it. Put it in your pocket. Yeah, keep it in done. your back pocket in right. case you need to play that card someday. Right. Right?